So, here's the thing. My lathe nearly destroyed itself because of a tiny two-post part. One second, I'm cutting normally. And the next, bang! The whole machine comes to a screeching halt. It sounded like gear stripping. And for a moment, I honestly thought I had just killed my lathe. But instead of buying new parts, I decided to build my own fix. I recently upgraded my mini lathe with a quick change tool post. And don't get me wrong, it's a huge convenience. Tool swaps are fast, no more endless shimming, and setups are way easier. But there's one big problem nobody told me about. Rigidity. See, the tool holder attaches to the side of the tool post and hangs out pretty far. So, when the cutting forces push back, they don't go straight into the saddle, they tip it. Just a tiny bit, but enough that the tool digs in, jams into the workpiece, and the whole lathe locks up violently. The very first time it happened, the two post didn't just slip, it actually broke. There's a little shaft inside that holds the tool holder. It's round with a hole drilled through it. A bolt runs through that hole, pulls the part into the dovetails and clamps it tight. Well, when the tool dug in, that shaft snapped clean off, right at the hole. Now, at first I thought, oh no, cheap casting. But then I realized, maybe that's intentional. That weak spot acted like a safety release. The part sacrificed itself. Instead of letting the crash destroy my gears, or worse. It was made of cast iron, and maybe, just maybe, the manufacturer meant for it to break first. Of course, me being me, I didn't leave it there. I made a new one, from mild steel this time. Stronger, cleaner, better, and it worked fine until the next jam. When the tool bit into the workpiece again, the steel part held strong. But the rest of the lathe didn't. The sound it made, honestly, I thought I was about to strip every gear inside the headstock. That was my wake-up call. Steel was just too strong. Next time, it wasn't going to be a replaceable part that broke. It was going to be something expensive. So, I went back to cast iron. This time, by choice. Not just because it might help reduce chatter, but because it's sacrificial. If something has to give, I'd rather it be a cheap little cast iron block that I can remake in an afternoon. So I decided to machine a new batch of them, this time making a couple of spares. I started with a weird shape of cut of cast iron, too irregular to clamp in the vise. So first job was the hacksaw cutting it down into something I could actually hold. Once I had a workable piece, I mounted it in the forger chuck and turned one end around. Flipped it to the three jaw and turned the other end. Now it could be grabbed securely in the rotary table for milling. 
I am using a vacuum cleaner to suck up the cast iron dust to prevent it from settling in my dovetails, where it will act like a grinding paste. On the mole, I cut a flat sided rectangle in the middle. Drill the shaft holes through both ends. Then, with everything set up, I slit the block in half, giving me two parts for one blank. Final step was to bring the rectangular ends down to thickness. No wasted material, and each piece could now be held while I finished machining. And just like that, I had two fresh toolpost parts, both made from cast iron, ready to go. So, the toolpost is back to its original form. But this time, I've learned my lesson. The mild steel version was too dangerous. The cast iron version is safer, predictable, cheap to replace. It might still break, but that's exactly what I wanted to do. I know I still have to find a permanent solution for that overhang problem. But for now, having space made from cast iron buys me some time and a little peace of mind. Check out the next idea by clicking the link on screen. See you in the next project.